So here you go. Here's another one. This is a bandwidth studio on the lake. Uh, I've been talking about smoothies, meaning non-decorative type birds, and this is a shorebird. Um, he's done off a sandpiper pattern, and then there's an extravagant paint job that went over him. Um, I'm not very fond of that paint job, but uh, I did it twice, so I should have filmed the other one. You could do it very simply or just uh, a couple of brush strokes. When they use these as gunning decoys, they were they just uh, slap some paint on them, two or three different colors, and uh, those are the antiques that you pay hundreds of dollars for. So, as usual, it starts with uh, a piece of basswood, and as fortune would have it, from the other sandpiper, the decorative one, that is the second video in the bird carving series that you guys asked for, there was a piece left over. So I put his, uh, drew a body out there, uh, a little bit smaller, I think, than the actual, uh, if you were to look at the size of a sandpiper. Uh, I, I may not know what I'm talking about because I really didn't look it up to see what the size was. But I, I think they're probably a third bigger than this. So there's a head, a blank that I'm drawing on the corner of that scrap and I want to get enough neck on there that uh, he will go uh, into circular motion. So over to the bandsaw. Don't show that anymore, as most of you know. Um, seems to be an ex extra step that's not required. Uh, and then there's head. His head will sit back, ignore that line under my thumb there. Uh, that's not there for any particular reason. So before I cut out the profile on this, I want to set the center lines as uh, if you've followed the carvings before or the channel at all you know that the center lines are uh, really important because they tell you what to leave and they give you a reference for the rest of the stuff that you're doing you can certainly do it without the center lines but you'll find that uh, you'll space off and carve on one side of it just a little bit too much and and mess the thing up so no fancy bandsaw work here yeah, you see I went and cut the profile there. I, I don't sandwich it back into the scrap pieces or any of that. I, I might take a scrap piece and stick it under the edge of it so that it has some leverage. So once again, I'm drawing the center lines in. And this guy, the whole intent of this one is it will not have detailed feather carving. We won't be doing six burning passes, a couple of stone passes on this. And this is something that uh, if you watch a lot of the... Uh, I don't even know. On PBS, occasionally they'll have uh, uh, the carvers of Chesapeake Bay or the Ward Brothers or someone along those lines, and they'll show you carving. And, and these guys crank these things out by the hundreds to sell to hunters. So, turn of the century, uh, late 1800s, turn of the century, around in there, uh, a lot of folks made their living by uh, shooting these birds by the thousands and then they'd take them into the market. Well, they needed decoys uh, to stick out there in the sand. And, and how these things ended up with that one wooden dowel looking leg is uh, if you've ever been down to the beach, heck, heck go over and watch uh, Jordy walking down the beach. He's got some shorebirds uh, right, right up there in Canada uh, where he's at that are walking around. And they do the same thing, but this was primarily done uh, in Chesapeake Bay in Maryland and then over into New Jersey. I used to put the heads on with dowels, and, and now I've taken to using a drywall screw. You see, the first thing I did was uh, get a starter in the bottom of the head, figure out where I want it on the body, and now I'm going to set that screw and get another starter in the center there. I find that this is actually uh, better in a lot of cases than the, uh, a wooden dowel or a peg that you carve in there. And the reason is that it, the screw helps um, really put pressure on it. You don't have to clamp the head down. So I put the screw back in, take a little cutoff wheel and, and cut the end of that screw off. And you'll see why I do that in just a second here. But it, it's kind of cool to see the sparks going around. So a, a little super glue on this, and uh, I'm not using epoxy. Uh, 
in the last couple ones, and the main reason for that is it's cold out here when I mess around in the studio, and the epoxy doesn't like cold. Super glue doesn't seem to care. But uh, it's tight there, and then one more turn, and it really gets uh, uh, set down on there nice. Now notice I'm setting the head off to the side. I've talked about this before. Uh, anything that's straight on like that uh, tends to lose a little bit in the character department. If you, if you cant their head to the side, uh, it kind of gives it and brings it a little bit of life. Now, something funky's going on here, and you're going to uh, find this interesting. And, and this is to show you, um, since this also is a tutorial, and you can tell by how long-winded it is. I'm shaping the head, and a lot of times I'll, I'll shape the head before I put it on there. In this case, it was just easier to put it on there and, and shape it because it uh, there's room to get in there and do that. And now I'm contouring the front. My, my idea of this is, since this is a smoothie, we want the body to be um, kind of almost egg-shaped, for lack of a better reference. But we want the lines, the contour lines, to, to flow from the body up and around through the neck and then up into the head. If you look at some of the older decoys, um, they, there's an interesting, uh, there's hundreds of carvers and the collectors, of course, are, are familiar with most of these guys and, and they all had a style, they all had something that they did that uh, an art connoisseur nowadays can look at and say, well, this one was made by Fred Jones. It's obvious it has this here. But one thing was they used to do a um, little miter tongue and groove key for a neck. And that took a lot of work on the bottom of that head to uh, set up that key to slide in there. And that was to hold them together. In other cases, you'll find these uh, decoys, if you find them in an antique store, they'll have a couple of uh, um, nails little brads stuck in the head to help glue them on. So I'm looking at this guy and I'm starting to shape his head down and uh, I'm not liking the fact that it, the body is not contouring up into the, the head of it and I'm thinking I probably left the neck a little too short and uh, you, you may not be able to tell that but uh, it was really bothered me as I was working on this part right here. I couldn't get the curve that I wanted from the underneath the bill all the way down to the front to make it look like I thought it should look. Now some of these necks are on the antique ones are really, and the heads are really crudely carved because you got to remember that uh, the, the, they were designed to be shot over. They put them out there and they were a decoy. So don't like the head. I actually took this over and to the scroll saw with the diamond bit and uh, cut through because it was on there pretty good and poof now he has a longer neck and I set it back just a little bit further on the body so that when I when I cut that away I can get the uh, the, the curve and the contour that I want so don't be afraid if you're not happy with with it one of the easiest things to throw away obviously is the head um, and, and in some cases I have actually cut heads off of decoys because I like the head and I didn't like the body so don't think that you gotta keep going if it's not what you like but then as in all things medical get a uh, <laughs> that, that's a shout out to Rob <laughs> all things medical, no, uh, all things, that it, it, it doesn't hurt to have a second opinion or to put it aside for a little while and then uh, take a look at it in a, a day or two or a month and, and it, you might find that it's okay again. So you can't tell just yet there, uh, I'm starting to mark out where I want to uh, cut this contour and you can see I wanted it to go back up into the neck and then back into the body that pins not working there it goes I wanted a little bit more of a sweep and that's why I took that head off so there back to the bandsaw now it's got the sweep up into the 
the neck and the head where the body joins and uh, it's time to go back and put the contour lines back on. You'll notice on, on this guy here, I, I do grab a knife a lot and uh, that knife is actually quicker than uh, if I were to grab the power carving. It's, it's just, you can see how quick that head, uh, top of it got shaped down. But there's a point where I, I, I start doing a little more detail work and, and I will grab the, uh, the power carving also. But you could do this whole thing with a knife. Uh, before I got sidetracked, I was talking about the videos that you watch of the uh, old carvers doing these. They'll be sitting or uh, standing uh, in a workshop on a beach somewhere, just a little one room workshop that's uh, probably long since blown away or rotted into the ground. And they'll have a vise sitting there and they'll stick a piece of wood uh, in the vise and then grab the, uh, a draw knife and go to town and, and shape these almost primarily with the draw knife. And then you see them they're almost always, I don't know if it's for the filming or whatever, but they're, they're sitting outside, uh, either barefoot or uh, relaxing by the ocean, finishing up the carving on these. But uh, a lot of the, the, the more famous carvers, the decoys again, it was uh, the same as if you would go down uh, to Cabela's or someplace like that and, and buy a string of 50 decoys. These guys made these decoys and they sold them for a dollar or two dollars a piece. And uh, then people took them out. And you can, you'll see if you look in into the uh, buying a decoy online or going to spend more money, you'll see some of them that'll, the comment will be, and this one has no bird shot in it. This one doesn't have a whole bunch of holes in it uh, because they treated these like a working tool and the birds would land amongst their decoys and take a shotgun and uh, ended up full of bird shot. So you kind of see the importance on this of those uh, contour lines or center lines in this case. I'm rounding stuff over but I, I'm really, uh, very rarely do I cut the line away. I'll cut up to that line and then once I get the shape where I want it I might take that line out. This guy's gonna get absolutely uh, no feathers carved into him. There are feathers painted if you saw, when you saw the beginning part there. But I want this head to flow down into the body. And the only way to get that is with um, a lot of sanding when you're all done. Some of these smoothies, uh, if you look at uh, competition decoys, some of the smoothies are fancier and uh, look more realistic than the ones that have the actual feathers carved in stone. And that has to do with the skill of the uh, creator or the artist who's painting these things. Uh, you can get into 40 or 50 hours of paint on these. I don't have that kind of patience. And I tend to mess around and, and goof it up when I'm painting. And the, some of the better stuff is, is just trying to to fix something that looks goofy and it's just luck of the draw in a lot of cases on how the paint comes out on these. But you don't have to do much at all on this. You could you could paint this with two colors or three colors, just basic, basic colors and still get uh, the idea of what it is. One of the reasons for that is what we talked about before if you follow the channel and uh, are a subscriber. If you're not, you, you probably should do that if, you, if it appeals to you and go back and take a look at them. But I'm looking through this piece and looking at the outlines. So you hold it up in front of you and you, you see the silhouette of it. And that's, that's really what I'm carving. In, in actuality, that's really all a decoy is, is a silhouette of a bird. I have no idea if birds can see color or any of that sort of thing. I would imagine at the bare minimum, they could see shades different uh, light and dark I guess maybe once again I have no idea what I'm talking about so I've got the head pretty much where I want it uh, it's, it's got a nice flow going all the way around I'm leaving the tip of the beak there there it's not going to be wood on this one I'm going to I'm going to show you in this one how to use a, a nail a lot of the antique decoys have nails 
simply because the beak would break. Now, uh, some people make, uh, there are carvers that are making uh, representations of the old decoys and they're, they're really quite a work of art, some of them that they do, and uh, you'll pay for them uh, being a work of art. But they will make the bill on these shorebirds so that it is detachable, which means they'll make it kind of a press fit in there or they'll put cork on it and uh, if you're taking this somewhere to to demonstrate to someone or to to show off um, at a show then uh, this guy will have a beak that can come out i have found that the these beaks make good scratching posts for cats and for some reason if you make them out of out of wood we've got one of the original loons I carved probably the original loon and he's had the tip of his beak repaired several times and it's not just one cat it's several cats we've had over the years for some reason they scratch on it and then they decide that it needs a little bit of work so they'll chew on the end of the beak so people like Jordy who have cats and not dogs like the rest of all of us great carvers <coughs> sorry Jordy but uh, the, the cats will chew on them for some reason I guess that doesn't hold true because I've had a lot of stuff eaten by dogs too so in fact the other day there was a carving laying on a Groot's bed and my wife said oh no did he eat it and I went over and looked and picked it up and he hadn't got around to eating it yet but he had taken it over there probably with the intention that he was going to eat it. That's a uh, saber burr in that. It's, a, it's one of the yellow ones, the medium ones, and I, I find the medium works as well as the coarse. And what I'm doing <coughs> I'm trying to get a, a flow on this guy I, I don't think it's the actual shape of a bird but it's kind of a rounded over version you can you can see that starting to develop there and I'm working real hard to to get those swoops and those contours down in there the truth be told if you look at the tail in the back I, I would have if I were going to redo something off of this pattern and, and, and quite frankly I didn't make a pattern I used to make patterns of these and put them in a, a box or a drawer and then they they get lost with all the rest of the junk it would be nice if these could sit on the if, if I had, was organized enough in the studio that I, I could make these templates uh, I'd probably make them out of Luan or something along those lines or plexiglass and keep them um, but I, I don't actually do enough of each each version to uh, each pattern to, to really warrant the pattern and it's kind of fun to to work from I, I can take a drawing of one of these I could draw this thing into a pattern and make another one and it wouldn't look quite the same it would have different characteristics about it but I would have left a little bit more on the bottom portion of the tail there where the, on the V. I thought that came out just a little bit thin. You can see me sticking my thumb in there. There's going to be one leg on this character. And like I said, a lot of this was done with a knife. And then uh, now the fun part starts, which is sanding. So I skipped ahead. I didn't make you watch an hour of sanding on this guy and I just sanded him till he was relatively smooth. I noticed there's a flaw in here where it's not contouring down in there where I wanted so I'm going to clean that up a little bit and then he'll get quite a bit more sanding but now you you pretty much got the bird. I will put glass eyes in it. I didn't want to, uh, to me I, I don't like carved eyes necessarily unless it's a representative of a period piece or something. The, the glass eyes just do so much more for it, uh, in my opinion. 
So there's that guy. Now uh, on the decoratives, uh, if you're doing a competition decorative, or not decorative, but uh, smoothie, they can't have any well-defined feathers. They can have a feather groove, grouping, and it can be done by a groove. And the concept was that a smoothie decoy uh, was stronger. So you, you'll see a lot of cases the wings are represented as uh, squares or rounds. What you see me doing here is, is uh, artificial or made up back end on those wing tips. It, it's not representative of the bird because this isn't really a bird. If anything, it would be a sandpiper, I suppose. It might be a yellow leg if uh, I had done a little something different with the beak, but I made these really, I thought, cool looking sweeps on the back. And then when I started painting them, I didn't know what to do with them. And I wish I had just left these as a, a simple contour, but they, they read pretty well in the, in the smooth portion of this, as you'll see. So you can paint these any way you want and, and, and go to any level from none, which you could get away with on this guy, I think, if you, if you sand them nicely. You could just put a coat of shellac or varnish on it and be done. But uh, I went ahead and put a wing in there and it's, it's not going to be uh, smoothed down other than the body will be smooth under it and I'll round over these, these edges. But here I'm cutting in the V groove on the wing. And then uh, these three scallop sections on the back there that you'll see just a second as I go around here. When I was carving it, like I said, I, th I thought they looked pretty neat. Um, and then when I got to the painting part, I was thinking to myself, why did I go ahead and do that? That's stupid to put those in there. Um, so you decide. That's what Bob Ross would say, right? You decide you made it do whatever you want with it. I am cutting those with that, that ruby flame. And now I'm cutting in uh, just a little portion on the top of the tail. And in actuality, that really isn't the tail, that's the wing down to it. So once I'm finished with those those two contours uh, on the wings, I will round those over, and you'll see that in just a second. But that's it. That's the the end of the carving, pretty much, on this guy. With with a smoothie, you, you really kind of have to work with the contours and and, and make it. Um, give it some shape, I guess, for lack of better reference. You can, you can leave a, a decorative a little more blocky and you can delineate shapes with um, finely carved feathers and that sort of thing, but this guy's gonna read all as one piece. And there's one side rounded over, one side not rounded over on the, on the wings there. Actually, I lied to you. This, this is where I'm rounding over the, the part of the wings. And So now we're, we're getting to the point where we're just cleaning cleaning some stuff up. You can see some sharp edges in there and I will uh, take and sand those sharp edges all the way. Uh, you can do it with a, an orbital sander if you have a small one. Any There's a, a, a thousand different types of sanding equipment out there. But there you have it. See, I thought that looked pretty neat uh, when I was sitting like that, but when I, when I started painting them, it's not conducive to the feather 
marks that you're painting in to have those swoops going around the, the back side. So I like him at this point. I, I was real happy with him. I like the shape. Uh, you can see I got a little booger in the neck there that I need to sand out, and I will do that. I skipped over relatively fast the portion about the eyes. I put the eyes in. I suspect these are five millimeter. Um, I don't have the the magic uh, gauge with me anymore, and, and I was too lazy to get up and pick up a ruler or a pair of calipers and see. But there's a, there's a quick way. I did not put an eye socket or an eye groove in these guys. The eye is just put in there uh, flush on the, on the, on the face because it is a smoothie. Whereas if I were going to do uh, some feathers, I would have ran an eye groove down. And if you want to see the difference between the decorative uh, and the smoothie, uh, go back in the videos that I have and, and look at the uh, Curlew Sandpiper and you'll see that that guy has an, an eye groove. The eyes are set pretty much the same way on, on all the decoys that I do. And that's quick wood that I'm putting them in with. You can use some of the other epoxies. Don't use the plumber epoxy or the, uh, or the steel ones to some degree. You can build a steel piece that'll repair your car. Um, with the same type of deal, same type of tube, but uh, that stuff is sticky and it sticks to your hands. It's just a mess and it's nasty. Um, th this is not that bad. It comes off readily. But uh, some of the stuff that's for plumbing will work. It will set eyes and, and I, I bought it probably because they didn't have any of the quick wood. Uh, it, there used to be a time when you had to special order this stuff. You can see how it squeezes out around that it was kind of a neat shot and uh, if you watch the decorative that's that point I would leave that rim on there and put some feathers uh, in that with a knife and if you've been watching you'll notice that, that that's a homemade knife there and I use it primarily to set set eyes and once in a while if I need to I'll, I could sharpen it up and uh, it carves actually pretty nicely it's just that I, I like that other knife, the red one, that's a Ramelson. Someone had bought some Ramelsons and uh, had a, a mixture, I, I forget who it was, and was asking questions, wanted to know what kind of knife they had. Uh, the one that they had had two sides sharpened on the knife, which to me is, makes no sense whatsoever. If you watch how I use a knife, and a lot of carvers use a knife, they, they'll lever the back of that knife with their thumb. So if both sides of it are sharpened, you'll end up with a band-aid on your uh, finger like some other people we know. And uh, man, Rob, you're just not getting, it. You can't let it go. <laughs> karma, I've told you karma's gonna come get me one of these days, I'm, I'm gonna, but uh, I'm not gonna carve if I cut my finger. I'm just gonna take a month off and get all healed up. So you'll have to watch, subscribe and watch videos later on. And, uh, and count and see if there's some scars on my hands. Uh, right now there is a, there's a scar on my right hand behind my thumb, so that doesn't count if you're counting scars in the future. Um, but that, and there's a scar on my left hand between the thumb and forefinger on the back of my hand. So that's two scars, they don't count. They've been there for a long time. And uh, it wasn't a result of doing these carving videos. So you see what I'm, I, I've actually got my finger on the on the back of that knife and, and that one Ramelson knife that they made, they called it a carving knife. And the, the guy who bought them bought a set of three. And, uh, but he made a comment that he thought that the, the knives weren't, weren't very good quality and that they weren't sharp. Um, I have not found that to be the case. I've had six or eight Ramelson knives, including a chip carving set, and they all come right out of the package for me, just razor sharp and really don't require any attention whatsoever. Um, you can, 
just drop them forever. Although I'm, I'm lazy, I've got a diamond hone, and occasionally I'll take three or four strokes on the diamond hone, and then uh, then I'll, I'll strop them in between carving. And as long as you don't abuse them, and grab and cut something that you really shouldn't be cutting. It's not like a screwdriver, a carving knife. You, it doesn't do any good if you, I mean, use your pocket knife for that kind of stuff. It's not like a screwdriver where it's a multi-tool and you can use it however you like. So his eyes are set. He came alive. He's got character. He requires quite a bit more sanding. Uh, and it's time to figure out how the old timers did this stuff. So here's an old rusty nail. And you'd think that this had been sitting around forever, but it's not the case. Uh, I'll leave a can out there and it'll rain in the summertime and the, the coffee can gets full of, um, filled with water and then these nails rust. But rusty nails work just fine. So this is actually one of the, f the, the few pieces of our uh, tools that Dremel makes that I, I use. And it's a cutoff wheel. So this has little discs and you, you definitely need to, uh, I turn this, this is probably also the only time I really turn the uh, grinder down from 10. It has a zero to 10. This one was supposed to be 40,000 and I turn it down to three or four because that wheel can't take it. It'll fly off there in little pieces. So you need to wear eye protection for sure. Uh, and, and here I just put a bend in it and I sharpened up the tip of it and, and I actually did drill a hole in the beak there and then I, I set that in uh, with epoxy this time because it uh, doesn't tend to grab. There's a little bit of a problem with the metal in there. Metal does not bond as well to the wood but you can see I'm coming back in and I'm cutting the tip of that thing off. Uh, well the nail head of the thing it has a name it's a nail so they got a nail head on it but I just cut it off and I cut it off kind of at an angle and then uh, now I'm going to come back in and um, car carve away or, or grind away kind of the top half of this beak and then a little bit of the bottom and give it a big shape you could never get away with a uh, piece of wood this thin. I mean, you can, but uh, you're gonna break it or lose it. And the, the original decoys that they, the hunting decoys that they made, they, they used nails because they were readily available. They went in there and they, they, they kind of have a unique look about them. And you can see you can do a little carving with that disc. Not highly recommended. I just happen to have it uh, sitting in my hand, so I messed around with it. Uh, one of the things you have to be careful with on this, uh, when you're grinding on a nail like this, if you get it hot, it, it'll, the glue will melt. So you don't want to get it too hot. Otherwise, all the work you would, did to inset that and glue it in there, it, it'll just come apart. If you haven't uh, uh, looked down in, depending on what you're watching on, I mean, when I watch these videos on the big TV at home, which is primarily where I watch them occasionally on a computer, you don't get the comment section and you don't get the description in there. All you, all you get is the video. And, and as a result, depending on what you're looking at this on, you, you may or may not have the option to subscribe. Uh, but if you get a chance, and you're looking at a computer uh, and you're bored, take some time and go down and look through the different uh, wood carvers that I follow on there. I, I'm just about to do an uh, update on some of them. Uh, but at, as is the norm, you should go check out Jordy's stuff, Jordy Johnson over at Carving Fusion. You should go see how Rob is healing up on his latest injuries. He's got uh, a mad hawk 
that he's doing out that's kind of interesting looking. Uh, so there's the, there's the de decoy, and, and you should watch out and see uh, Calvin over at Calvin Carbs. He's a young kid up in uh, Canada there and, and do his stuff. So I didn't spend a whole lot of time on how to put this together. It's a chunk of basswood on the bottom, and, and actually it's not, I lied to you. It's a chunk of pine on the bottom there. And uh, that is a brass rod that I put in the middle. Uh, this isn't gonna, I could have used a wooden dowel. I looked around, I didn't, find, I didn't see one, but I did have a section of brass there. I would prefer to use the wood, no matter how well you glue this brass in, if you don't cross pin it and then set that down in the glue, the thing will eventually start to spin and he'll wander around. And then if you have any kids or something, they'll take it. So there's the end of the guy. You didn't have to paint him. You could have left it alone. I didn't, I painted him. I, like I said, it wasn't real pleased with it, but I'm not totally unhappy with it. But there's the difference between a smoothie and a decorative decoy. So as always, like, comment, and, and uh, subscribe. This has been Ben with Studio One League.